Hello everyone! In the last couple of videos we were focusing on different Adobe Commerce Cloud configuration aspects and many times we encountered the deployment process but we never actually took a look inside of it and that's why today we are going to dive into how exactly it works, what steps and scripts are executed and the goal of this video is to help you make better informed decisions when it comes to applying different changes or optimizing the deployment process for your clients. So let's start with an explanation of what is a deployment process. So the deployment process refers to the sequence of actions performed when a change is pushed to a Git repository of a project. In the context of Adobe Commerce Cloud, this process involves executing a series of predefined steps that build, prepare and transfer the changes to a new environment. In Adobe Commerce Cloud, the deployment process consists of three phases – build, deploy and post-deploy. So now let's go over each of these phases. So the first phase is a build phase and it prepares the environment. So it assembles containers for the services defined in the configuration files, then it installs dependencies based on the composer log file and then runs the build hooks defined in the Magento API file. But there is no ability to connect to any services or access the database. The build phase depends only on the resources limited to the environment. And the next phase is the deploy phase. It replaces the old version of the environment with the new version that was built in the previous build phase. And in the deploy phase, Adobe Commerce Cloud enables firstly the maintenance mode that holds all the incoming requests so that all the data migrations and services can be safely migrated. Then mounts the file system. And here is an important notice that everything in the build process is read only and only directories that are defined in the mount section are write only. This means that on each deployment, Adobe Commerce Cloud must make sure that all the writable files and directories are correctly copied. We will see that in action later actually, but once this is like the file system is mounted, Adobe Commerce Cloud opens network connections and activates all the necessary services that are also defined in the relationship section of the Magento app YAML file. And then at the end, it runs the deploy hooks also defined in the Magento app YAML file. And once everything is done, Adobe Commerce Cloud will disable the maintenance mode along incoming requests. And finally, at the very end, there is a post deploy phase that runs the post deploy hooks. And in this phase, for example, we can configure pages to be warmed up or some additional scripts that should be executed just after the application is deployed. So there are some out of the box configurations like warm up pages, but also we can create some custom logic here. Now that we have a general understanding of the process, let's navigate to our project and explore the hooks section that was previously mentioned to identify the specific steps involved. All right, so we are in the Magento Appian file and here we can notice there is this hooks section with co which consists of three phases that we talked about. So there is build, deploy and post deploy phases. And as you can notice, um, Adobe Commerce Cloud uses the ECE tools to run some scenarios and those scenarios are XML files and they consist of different steps and we will actually see this in action in a second. Uh, so basically we use like Adobe Commerce Cloud uses the run command from the ECE tools package to run the deployment scenarios. And in the build um, phase, we can notice this first line set hyphen E and it basically uh, causes hooks to fail on the first failed comment instead of the final failed comment. So the first comment that fails will basically stop the whole process. And then we install the composer dependencies and then we run the scenario called generate XML. Then we write transfer XML. And in the deploy phase, we actually run the scenario called deploy XML. And in the post deploy, there is a post deploy XML being executed. So now let's go find this file. So let's copy the path and let's search for it. 
let's see oh exactly so the generate xml is in vendor magento ece tools package in the scenario build directory so let's open it let's see how it looks like so here we can see that in this scenario directory we have a build and also deploy and post deploy uh, scenarios configured so the first phase is build and it has the generate scenario and transfer scenario so what we have in scenarios files so firstly we can notice there are like different steps configured and each step uh, consists of a name and so this is just uh, like identifier of a of a step and there is a type and type is a class that is responsible for executing the code related to a step and there is also a priority which tells adobe commerce cloud um, when to run each steps and for example if we go to this class magento magento cloud step build pre-built we can see there is a standard magento php code uh, which does some checking about like generated code and metadata directories um, if we get back we can go over different steps so after the pre-build step we have apply patches step set production mode validate configuration and we can see actually here there is a like a validators array which consists of critical and warning validators so for example a critical one is magento app liam file validator which is responsible for checking if the magento app liam file is correct and for example the warning we can see in the warning there is ideal state and if you remember there is this ece tools smart wizard ideal state uh, comment and this comment is responsible for checking if your configuration of Adobe Commerce is actually optimized. So we'll see this in action actually in next videos because I want to record a video to show you how to optimize your Adobe Commerce Cloud projects. But also it's important to be aware that this comment is also executed in the validators in the build um, phase. Then after it we have re refresh modules, copy pub static, uh, there is other um, stuff related to um, uh, Adobe Commerce. Then after it there is a compilation of dependencies, injections, there is a dump autoload uh, from Composer and there is also a deploy static content. And this step is actually like it depends on your configuration uh, because if we go to the code of it there is this check to validate if the uh, static content deployment is like configured on a build uh, phase or in a deploy phase. And then there is also some uh, run a bailer configuration, but that's uh, not important uh, for now. So this is in the generate XML, but also the build phase consists of a transfer XML, right? So this is the next file and there is also like uh, only like uh, three steps. So there is compress static content so if the static content deployment was done in a previous step uh, there will be a compression of it then we clear init directory and uh, init directory is actually used to copy the um, write table files and directories from the mounts that are defined in magento app yam file uh, and uh, after it there is a backup data so basically all the write table dirs and files are and copied to the init directory and then in the next uh, phase those files and directories were actually copied back to a new environment and the next file is deploy xml file so let's go over the steps that are configured here so at the beginning there is just a preparation of some caches so like op cache a cleaning a view preprocess directory a cleaning redis cache file cache and so on and there is for example this restore write table dirs so the write table dirs are copied back from the init directory but the next step is actually pretty important because this is this enable maintenance mode so this is the step that basically makes the website unavailable so all the incoming requests are hold then we disable crons uh, just to make sure that no process is running right now when we deploy uh, our new version of Adobe Commerce. And then there is a validate configuration. So there are also like different validators for like critical warning and notice. We will now go over those um, items here. There are a lot of like configurations related to, as you can see, there's a database configuration, search, resource configuration, session, and so on. So there are a lot of stuff that needs to happen before we actually run the set setup upgrade command because all leads to basically running the setup upgrade command. Uh, but after we validate that everything is fine, 
then we unlock cron jobs. Uh, so if there was like any cron job that was uh, stopped in the meantime, uh, we need to make sure that the status is uh, like uh, the, the status of a cron is uh, restarted. And then we set crypt key and then we actually install update. So it now depends if the environment is like a new environment and there is no database. So you can see there is like install steps and update steps. So if our database and project is already installed, we will just go to update steps. But if not, Adobe Commerce Cloud will need to install everything. So there is like a distinctions of install and update steps. But let's say we already have an environment, so we just go to update steps. So we prepare config, we create Chrome Consumer Runner, we check the connection, and then we set the RabbitMQ, session, search engine, URLs, um, some other stuff. And uh, this is uh, just a part when we prepare the configuration to be correctly set, right? And then after the configuration is done, we set admin URLs in the uh, app etc env php file, then we clean cache, and there is this bin magento setup upgrade command run. So this is the uh, command that is responsible for upgrading our database. There is also a split database step, um, but this depends on your configuration. And there is also some um, configuration of a cache type. Uh, we can actually see what's going on here. Uh, run cache enable to restore all cache types. Okay, so this command is responsible for making sure that all caches are enabled. And after it's all done, we have another deploy static content. So again, like I mentioned before, it depends on your configuration. So either the static content deploy can happen on the build process or in the deploy process. After it's done, we compress static content, we disable Google Analytics, and um, we can see there is a comment, this process runs processes if only post deploy hook is not configured. Okay, so we actually in Magento Avian file have this post deploy hook configured, so this will not, will not be executed. And then at the very end, we have disable maintenance mode to make it very clear. Once the maintenance mode is disabled, it means that all the requests will actually go to the new version of our application. So we can consider the deployment being done. There's also this post deploy phase that will also go over it, but it's important um, to be aware because sometimes client asks uh, how much time it takes to deploy an application and they actually mean how much time the website will be not available, right? So we don't need to take like the whole deployment with build, deploy and post deploy phase. We just need to measure the time that takes from the enable maintenance mode and then disable maintenance mode, but because this is the time that the website is unavailable. And in the last post deploy phase, we have only a couple of steps. So firstly, there is a check if the deployment is failed. If it's failed, then all their steps will not be executed. Then we check a configuration. So there is a configuration for a debug logging. So uh, it's checking if the production environment, this logging in the debug mode is disabled. Then we enable crons. So it's also important. So in the deploy phase, the website is available, but in the post deploy phase, uh, crons are enabled. Then there is a backup of some important files like aptc in vphp, I believe, and others. So if you are interested, you can check the uh, backup implementation. Then we clean cache, we warm up pages based on the configuration. Uh, and I believe this configuration is done in Magento env yum file. And there is also a step to check time to first byte. So this is just a measurement of uh, also we can configure some URLs that Adobe Commerce Cloud will check. So this is just for some analytics. That would be it for this video. And uh, I guess you see that the deployment process is really complex. It consists of a lot of different steps. We can also alter um, the behavior of those steps by um, changing some configurations. Um, so yeah, it's, it's complex, it's hard to understand what's going on, uh, but fortunately we have access to those scenarios files. We can see the code that is responsible for executing those steps. So we can actually understand, it takes some time, but we can actually understand what's going on behind the scene. So this is priceless. 
and um, in this video we covered like the out of the box general deployment process in Adobe Commerce Cloud but in the next videos we will cover uh, how to actually change the process of uh, deployment so we'll see how to alter those uh, scenarios uh, XML files and also in the next videos we will cover the static content deploy so how it works uh, and what we can do in Adobe Commerce Cloud and then also there will be a video explaining how to optimize Adobe Commerce Cloud deployments. So stay tuned, thank you for watching and see you in the next video.